How was your meeting with Scott Boris? <laughs> It, it was fun. Yeah. It was fun. I'm, I'm not as creative in describing uh, discussions and meetings as Scott is, um, so I'll let him. Uh, I'll let him handle that. But um, you know, that's the, one of the benefits of these meetings every year is is agents are here and um, we can meet face to face, and so it's always good to do that to kick off the off season. Is, is this job do you think going to be more fun for you now that you're out of the 30th market and into the first market, and obviously have more money? Look, whenever you have resources, it expands what you can do, and um, it gives you more opportunities, and so we can explore more things, and, and yeah, that, that is enjoyable, absolutely. Given Scott's uh, priorities for his clients, how does he interact with you as running the Mets as opposed to when you were running the Brewers? I, I think Scott and I have always had a good relationship, and, and he's always been um, good to deal with, so um, yeah, I think we may be talking about, uh, at times, a slightly different segment of his clientele now that I'm with the Mets um, but but uh, but he, he's always been good to deal with. He said you the, told uh, him that, that Pete Alonso is a core player and Pete instructed him to listen so what are you telling him about Pete? I think I think just as a general practice I'm going to keep all those types of discussions private um, I think uh, I've always found it's in the best interest to, to keep those types of discussions between me and the player. Whatever negotiations existed previously his representatives have turned over, and obviously leadership here has turned over. Do you have a sense of what conversations happened before your arrival and where things stood before both sides changed? Yeah, I think I have a broad sense. I think certainly, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure Steve has a much more sure. uh, specific sense. Uh, so if I need any catch up, I, I know where to go for the for the yeah. details. The fact that, that, that that all has changed, though, does it kind of feel like you're getting a clean slate when it comes to the situation right now, both of you maybe? Sure. Yeah, I mean, look, neither of us has been involved in this discussion previously, so, yeah, we're, we'd, we'd both be coming at it uh, new. Who do you think of Pete as a player? Is he a core player? I mean, Scott, the way Scott described it says he, you said he's a core player. Sure. Pete, Pete's a really good player, and, and he's been a good player and a, and a high-producing player on the Mets for a long time now. Um, we're fortunate to have him. I'm looking forward to watching him play this season, um, and I'm not going to predict the future. Some people have said you're not a huge fan of these mega deals. Is that just a reflection of where you were before, or would you say that the majority of these mega deals are not things that you would do? I, I think um, maybe casting one judgment on an overarching segment of deal wouldn't be fair. I think there are some... Uh, deals uh, at the high end of free agency that have worked out very well for all involved. And I think there are others um, that, that maybe haven't. And so the, the lesson there is is just do your homework and, and do your best to make the right investments. Dave, just another one on Pete. How do you kind of forecast like his skill set? He's an elite power guy, but he's also going to be in his 30s pretty soon. Yeah, and so those are all things that, that we're going to have to take into account as, as we look at him. Um, we understand how important power is. Um, and we also have to, to take a look at um, you know, the other parts of this game. Speculation is still existing. Is there anything else you want to say on that front about Pete Alonso? I, I still expect him to be our opening day first baseman. I know that just to go off, and I, I know you don't like to draw lines in the sand and that kind of thing, but can we say that you do not anticipate him getting traded during this offseason? Yeah, I, I think I do not anticipate him getting traded. Um, I don't do draw not inter- I, 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 I don't draw lines in the sand, and I'm never going to say never, but I absolutely think it's fair. I don't anticipate him being traded. Have teams asked about him to this point? He's only been here a few days. Sure, I, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a very good player um, who's got one year left on his contract. Of course teams are going to ask about him. With uh, Peterson, did you just find out about this, or was this something you knew about when you got here? Or what um, so he he's been, he had been battling some uh, hip soreness throughout various points of his career, really, um, and this year, uh, and I think it persisted a little bit more into the off season more than he was anticipating. Uh, we got him checked out, I believe, about a week ago um, with multiple physicians, and ultimately surgery was a recommendation. I know. You talked about the pitching depth and pitching situation yesterday when you knew about this. Yep. We didn't know, but how does it impact what you're looking to do and how you view the depth chart? Yeah, it, it takes someone who um, certainly when I took the job I thought was going to be part of our mix 
um, through the first half of the season, and now he's not available. And, and so that, that does change our depth chart. Um, uh, we'll have to make sure we have sufficient depth, and it's certainly my hope and my expectation that he's going to be able to play an important role in our team in the second half. How do you go into it? Do you find a piece that you think you need and find a way to make it fit into what you think of spending, or do you go in with a bigger a bigger payroll in mind and try to work towards? Yeah, look, I, I, I think what I'd say is, is you know, Steve has clearly demonstrated that when the right players are there and and when the right opportunity is there, he's he's going to invest in the team. And so my job is to is to now really determine what are the best opportunities for us and how do we construct this roster so that um, we can compete in 24, but we also give ourselves the flexibility and the opportunity to continue to add to the team going forward. Um, and, and that's what I'm aiming to do. You acquired uh, Vogel back when you were in Milwaukee. Now he's here. Do you anticipate him being part of the mix next season? Or how do you, what do you think is going to happen? We'll have a decision on Vogel um, coming up here, and, and we're still discussing it. Um, I understand the, the skill set uh, he brings. Clearly, I, I acquired him. Um, in my previous uh, previous spot, and so I appreciate that. I also have to look at how it how it fits into the broader scope of our team here now, um, and we haven't made any decisions there yet. Uh, if you see a player, no matter how expensive that player is, you, you can you you can spend the money. Well, I, I think there are, there are always discussions um, uh, with ownership when we're talking about spending money, um, but I think Steve has demonstrated is going to continue to demonstrate that he wants to invest in our team and and do what he can to put a winning product on the field. I, I certainly don't anticipate that changing. David, yesterday you talked about not being afraid of having too many good players at a particular set. So I'm wondering how that may relate to the outfield, particularly with Starling Marte coming off the season that he had. How do you kind of program that for particularly right field as well? Yeah, so I, I think any time you have a player who's, who's coming off of um, nagging injuries or, or, or significant injuries, um, you have to insulate yourself, and, and we're certainly going to try to do that throughout the offseason to ensure that we have depth not only in the outfield but across our entire roster um, so that inevitably when injuries do pop up um, or if they linger, uh, we have the ability to go to other really quality players. You, you have uh, two starters at this point. Uh, you, you've got two, obviously, that are penciled in at this point. You've got three that are optionable that are pretty, yeah. pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'd like multiple. I'm, I'm not going to put a firm number on it, but, but certainly I think multiple – um, would so be more up. than two, even. We'll, we'll see. I mean, I, I look. We're going to need eight to ten over the course of the season. Um, you don't need to know exactly who those eight to ten are on opening day, but you do need to have options um, to give yourself and, and and look at your depth and say, okay, I could see where we're going to get that eight to ten from this grouping of pitchers. The last couple of years, this team has used two sort of co aces at the top of the rotation. Now there's Senga right now. Do you feel like you need another like bona fide ace type? Look, I, I, you're, you're old, you'd always love to bring in top flight talent and top flight pitching. Um, I, do I think we need one? No. no. I, think, I think you can compile pitching staffs in a variety of different ways. Um, uh, certainly any time you have horses at the front of the rotation, it makes everything else a little bit easier. Um, but it's not impossible to do it without that. General questions. As a, how um, is it a challenge to have a two-way players for to create that, um, to construct a roster? How, uh, the challenge of having a two-way player in, in constructing a roster? Um, look, I think, I think hypothetically, two-way players probably make constructing a roster a little bit easier because you sort of have two players in one. Um, and I think the, the Angels have given the industry a pretty good blueprint um, for, how, uh, for how you can manage that and how you can um, allocate playing time and... Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I don't necessarily think of that as, as a, a challenge. I think it, it, it perhaps helps roster construction. In your um, making the rounds, getting to know people in the organization, you mentioned you, you've spoken to some players. Yep. Have you talked to Pete much? Yeah, I have talked to Pete. What has one of those first conversations been like? They, they've been good. I mean, he, he's, you know, he's very enthusiastic about being a Met, right? And, and he wants us to win. And that's... That's been the consistent theme from all of our guys is, is they want to win. And whatever they can do to help us win, they're willing to do. He's always a guy who cares a lot and has ideas on things. Mm-hmm. Did he share anything with you about 
what the Mets could do different or, or better or anything like that? I, I think all the players I talk to, I ask those types of questions. What, what do you think we're doing really well? Um, where could we improve? Where could we make your lives easier? And I think a number of players, including Pete, had, had some really interesting ideas. Who, who are some of the guys that, are, that stand out when you, you talk about maybe farm guys that can make a push uh, for next season for the rotation? Yeah, so I, I think realistically at the front end of the season, the guys who we'd be looking at in the rotation mm-hmm. are the guys that you guys saw in the big leagues for the most part towards the end of There's last year. Luke Casey and Tyler McGill and uh, Buto. Jose Buto. Um, you know, I think I think those are the guys who um, I would expect to be in the mix mm-hmm. um, at various ports, points for the rotation um, next year. Um, you know, I, I don't know that we'd go to camp with um, with guys who were in sort of that that double A rotation or mm-hmm. just getting to the triple A rotation. I don't I don't know that we'd go to camp with any of those guys firmly in the mix for a rotation spot. What is the state of the farm system overall? I think it's improving. I mean, I think it got a lot better over the last twelve months. Um, uh, you know, you got I think a pretty strong draft class. You had um, some top prospects have. Uh, significant internal improvement, like like a Jet Williams, um, and, and then clearly the activity at the trade deadline um, brought in some some high end talent, specifically at the upper levels of the system. So um, I think we're in a much better shape uh, than than we were maybe a year ago at this time. Are you uh, <coughs> committed to keeping Nimmo in center for next season, or could there be something that happens and maybe? Shifts him to a corner spot, and so I, th- I think Brandon's a really good center fielder. Yeah. I think he, he's proven that. Um, if there are ways that uh, we can make our team better, um, uh, that have Brandon playing some corners, um, you know, we'll explore that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but I, I certainly have confidence that Brandon can play center field. Right. You also talked about the younger guys at particularly third base. What's kind of the balance with that? Because that that was an area where yeah. there there was some defense, defensive. So if, if we go with some of those younger guys, particularly at third base, um, you know, we're going to have to challenge them to improve in that area. Um, we, we, we weren't good enough there um, defensively. Um, I, I think, um, you know, when we're talking about Brett Beatty, Ronnie Mauricio, I, I think they have the ability. Um, I think they have the physical tools uh, to, to be a little bit better there than they, than they showed at the major league level last year. Um, and so that's a great opportunity for them to prove that. Different baseball people probably have different philosophies about how valuable defense is at a corner relative to bat, right? Like, where are you on how important defense is at third? Yeah, it's, so it's, it's, all a, um, it's all a balance, right? I, and I, I, I think, you know, I, I think defense up the middle is really important. Um, um, I'd like great defenders all over the field. Sometimes that's not possible. Um, uh, and so you can probably get away with a couple of positions that, that are a tick below average. Um, uh, it's tough to do that if you've got that all over the field, in my opinion. What you've seen of Mauricio, I mean, Mauricio hasn't played a heck of a lot at third base. Yeah. What you've seen of him, you're confident he can, he can handle that? I think his skill set, to me, his tools indicate he can handle it. But you're right, we haven't seen a ton of it. Um, he's going to need some reps there, mm-hmm. um, but uh, you know, I think he has the reaction time. Um, I think he's got the hands. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think it, I think it, his skill sets indicate to me that, that he can handle it. And left field didn't seem to mesh with him too well. Is that still on the table, or is that probably? Yeah, you know, I'd look at those guys as infielders. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, if 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 at some point. Either our situation necessitates a, a, a more pronounced shift to the off the dirt, or something else. We'll, we'll tackle it. But um, at this point, look at those guys. Yeah, okay. yeah. Is the size of left field and sitting field specifically influence that for you? I mean, typically, I mean, it's one of the bigger ones. It is. It is one of the bigger ones. Um, so, so yeah. I mean, that that is that is part of it. Um, I also think we have two young, gifted players. Um, we should probably give them every shot to stay on the dirt. Vientos Isn't, in that mix too. Yeah, I, I, look, I think Vientos is, is probably more of a bat first player, um, and I think in, you know relative to the others defensively, he probably has the the, the biggest step to take. 
Um, but he's also got, you know, potentially a carrying tool with his bat that uh, allows him to overcome some of those other things. Is Mauricio going to be playing in the Dominican this winter? Um, Ronnie is going to be playing in the Dominican. Will he be playing third base in the Dominican? I think he's going to be playing. I think he will be playing some third. Yeah. Um, we can't control all of that. Right. Um, and so I think he's going to play uh, some different positions down there on the dirt. And the last month notwithstanding, he's been playing baseball for a long time. Like He was in the Dominican yeah. last year. The minors to the Dominican spring training, long season right through early October. Would you guys rather him just relax a little bit? So he, he is taking some time now, yeah. and he, he's not going to play all winter. Okay. Um, so we'll make sure he gets sufficient recovery time um, prior to spring training. But I also think, like, especially for some of these younger players, like, just, like reps matter. Yeah. And so if you can play at a, at, in a high-level winter ball league, um, sometimes with some significant pressure on you, um, that's, that's not a bad thing.